and you're recording. All right. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Justin. All right. So, welcome to week two of Feet to Faith Drive to Director. Chloe, I know I'm asking a lot of you right now, but can you spotlight me? My spot. Okay, perfect. Um, okay. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Um, this is what best friends do. So thank you, Chloe. Um, so week two, drive to director. I am really excited about this week. Um, our lovely guest is Chloe Cox, who is y'all's upline superstar director. She is my sponsor and one of my best friends. Um, she is actually her and her husband are the ones that introduced me and Anthony. Her husband, Justin, is Anthony's best friend. So um, she is the one that I have learned everything from. Um, so I want you guys to make sure you're taking extra notes because um, it's going to be a good one. Um, please keep in mind, if you're on this call, thank you for showing up for yourself. I know last week I um, really dug into that a lot about showing up for yourself and showing up for trainings and doing all of that and why it's so important. And this is why because I didn't even tell you guys who the guest speaker was gonna be and here you are and you get to hear from our, you know, Upline Superstar Director in person live. So really excited for you guys to be here. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and jump in. So the title that I thought of for tonight is Three Legs of Consistent Success. I'm gonna say that again. Three Legs of Consistent Success. Okay, so Everyone is leading above on this call. Um, I know we have direct people are hundred feet to faith and directors underneath feet to faith. We also have, I'm not sure if you are on Felicia Rhodes team. We have a couple of you that she added her leaders on here, shout yourself out. And we have a couple of people that Whitney Hebel added. Um, Whitney was supposed to do the, <laughs> the guest speaking tonight, but she had her accelerated um, leadership training that she did not need to miss tonight. So um, welcome guys. I'm excited to have you guys on here too. And you know that since he's a big family and that, um, we are all just, you know, in the same boat together and everyone's reaching down, um, to bring everybody else up. So thank you guys for being on and showing up for your business. So three legs of success. Y'all know me as a teacher. This is what I'm talking about. It is in the files tab of feet to faith. Um, it is also going to be in the Google Drive that I have uploaded for this week's um, stuff with the outline and the um, different forms that I'm referencing to. Um, so three legs of success. So what do I mean by that? When I say three legs of success, I'm literally talking about a stool right here, okay? For those who are visual, like I am. So there's a stool with three legs, okay? So at the top of the stool is self-care. This was added in, actually, Chloe, when she first, her and Justin first did the three legs, it was just the stool, okay, the legs. And then it was added in the self-care because it's really important that you're taking care of yourself in order to do the things in your business that you need to do. So with the stool, self-care is number one. So I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit. And then we have PRV, we have, um, which are sales, sponsoring and coaching. Okay, so I'm going to dig a little deeper into those tonight, um, and then after that, Chloe's going to um, really dive into what consistency is and um, her top tips with consistency, um, and also kind of introduce her to some of y'all who might have never heard from her on a train like this. Um, so here we go. Real quick, hold on. <laughs> At the end of this month, if you were feet to faith, and if there is a director that is above you, so... Summer Buchanan, Kayla Justice, Mariah Guess, Tina King, Brittany Meisling, Rachel Ryan. You guys are coming off of Feet to Faith at the end of this month, starting November, okay? I don't want you guys to panic, but it's something that Chloe did with me and that I was chatting about it with her earlier. In order for you guys to rise and leadership to rise to the next level, it's time for some directors to step up to the plate and take it, okay? Now, you guys are all leading above, so you will all be on leaders and feet to faith, so don't worry about that, okay? So, just wanted to go ahead and say that out there so you guys can go ahead and start prepping your mind. 
Um, all right, so let's dive in. So the top of the stool is self-care, okay? If you're not taking care of yourself in anything you do in life, you cannot pour into others. And like I'm gonna say, that's with anything in life. If you are not taking care of you, if you're not filling up your cup, you cannot pour into other people's cups, okay? So for what um, self-care looks like for me might look differently to each and every single one of you because we are all you know, independent people. We are all independent consultants. So for me, Chloe and I are very similar. We both need to make sure that we are looking good. We are going to the gym because that's making all the endorphins to help us mentally. Um, and we have to make sure that, you know, we have set boundaries. If you don't have set boundaries, I talked about this last week, about who is in your circle, you need to make sure that who is in your circle are people that are pouring into you and that are not people that are going to be pulling the joy of life and sensi out of you, okay? So the first thing is self-care. You must take care of that for that, you know, seat that you're sitting on to stay, um, stay level, okay? So PRV is one of the stools. Um, PRV is where it all starts, okay? If you are not consistent with your PRV, your personal retail volume, your personal sales, then none of the other legs are going to be able to be stable, okay? PRV is your main focus. If you're listening to me right now and you're like, oh my gosh, Amber, I don't even know. Like, I don't even know where my PRV is coming from right now. I don't even have my 500. You got, you got time to work, okay? As a leader, your mind, your mind needs to shift into, by the 15th, today's the 13th, you need to have at least your 500 PRV in, okay? I was told that, I think, two years ago, and that was something that really resonated with me because not only was I ensuring that I was getting that 500 PRV, but for me, I didn't realize that I'm very competitive. I am with Sensi. It wasn't enough for me just to have 500 PRV in by the 15th. I then started bumping it, bumping it up. I wanted 1,000 PRV by the first weekend of the month, okay? Um, this month, if you guys listened to my live the other night in Feed the Faith, I told myself by the 17th because I get married Saturday, so excuses are out the door. I started face-to-face -face teaching. Excuses are out the door because we, we don't do that if we want to grow. But I told myself I'm going to have my 2,000 PRV in at least by the 17th, okay? I'm almost at 2,500 right now. I'm not saying that to brag. I'm just saying if you set your mind to it, you will achieve it, no matter what's standing in your way, okay? So PRV is a non-negotiable. If you are not partying consistently, that's the heart of Sensi. how Sensi started. Home parties are how it started, okay? The very first consultants, I don't even know how they did life because they had to like consistently party, okay? They're still consultants to this day, which is really freaking cool. But if you're not consistently partying, you're not building your customer base, you're not expanding your network, you're not, um, for lack of better words, you're not opening your mouth. You have to be partying, okay? Party is a scary word. If you've heard me lead um, trainings with anything else, party is a scary word, okay? Start asking people if they want free and half off Sensi or do you want free Sensi? That's what I ask people. Very simple. But you need to be consistently partying so you have a host, and this is what the beauty is of partying. You have a host. You know that host, but this host knows all of these people that they invite, okay? So say they have a very successful party. You follow up with those people that order from that party, book parties with them. Now you have another host over here who has all these people. Do you get where, get where I'm going? You have infinite amount of customers because you are constantly asking people, do you want free Cincy? Hey, I realized that you ordered, I mean, this is a party I just had. I realized that you just ordered $190 from Justin's party. Would you like the chance to get free Cincy? What do you think their answer is? Yeah. What, is, what does that entail? I don't even know. 
And I'm like, oh, easy, Facebook party. You don't have to do anything. Visly is the freaking way, truth, and life with Facebook parties. If you guys have not started doing that yet, please watch my training on it. It's fantastic. It runs it, your, it, runs it by itself. That's how I've gotten all my PRV this month, minus follow-ups this past um, week. So you have to be partying. Partying can look a bunch of different ways. It can be a Facebook party, a home party, a bag party, a text party, um, create your own link party. It can be anything, but you gotta be partying and following up with those people. Very important. Um, so, you guys are all lead and above on this page. Your mind, mind shift needs to go ahead and you guys are all driving for a director. You need to go ahead and have in your mind that 2000 PRV a month is minimum. Go ahead and get that instilled in your mind that that's what you're gonna start striving for and you are going to start working for that. 2000 PRV sounds very scary and I get it. Cause I was there and I was like, why, why can't I even get above a thousand? Okay. Then when I push myself a little more, okay, well, why can't, I can only get to 1500. What do I, what do I need to do? Once you start learning how to work your business effectively, front loading your calendar, when you know where that PRV is coming from with those four to five parties that you're having a month, it's easy but you got to do the front work to help yourself get there. Um, so go ahead and like write it down right now. I know you guys are all taking notes. Go ahead and like put a star and be like no less than 2000 PRV a month. Make it a goal for yourself because I guarantee you that when that starts happening, you're going to be expanding your customer base. You're opening your mouth more. You're pushing yourself out of your comfort zone and you're going to be growing your team more. You're growing as a person. Um, this was not me. Four and a half years ago. I'm a teacher, but I don't talk to adults. It freaked me out. Okay. I remember when I was in college and I had a public speaking class one summer. I think there was only eight other people in the room. And I literally was like anxiety attack, run to the bathroom every single time I was about to give a speech. But the more you do it and the more you practice, it gets easier. It's the exact same way with getting sales. We're not salespeople. That, we're not in the business of that. Since he sells itself, and we all know that, we're all using the products, since he sells itself. It's how you market the product. It's how you rave about the amazing stuff that we have. It's how you're sharing on your, so, your social medias and your stories. It's how you go about it. So get in your mind, 2000 PRV minimum a month. Um, it's a big mind, mindset shift. I get it. It's scary, but y'all went ahead and did your dream boards. All the dream boards I saw were fantastic. 2000 PRV a month minimum. Um, so talked about that, talked about that, talked about that. All right. If you need more training on types of parties, I'm just going to put this out there. You guys are all your own business owners. Okay. Do the research yourself, train yourself. There are oodles. I don't know why oodles of orange. That word is in my head right now. Oodles. There is so much information at your fingertips. Okay. If you want more information on types of parties or how to do it, guys, I had no clue how to do a Facebook party before COVID happened. That's the only type of party I'm doing now. It's easy. Okay. Feet to faith files tab. Leaders in feet to faith files tab. YouTube. Go to the leaders that you look up to and do what the successful people are doing. Learn from them. Okay? It is that simple. All right. Next, sponsoring. All right. <clears throat> so, PRV has to be taken care of before I ever want you thinking about sponsoring and intentionally sponsoring. Okay? You need to make sure that you're doing, you know, we have to have in a certain amount of PRV every month. Just make sure you're consistently and continuously making sure your business is taken care of because that's where that PRV and the sales come from, okay? Sponsoring. You need to be consistently growing your front line, okay? And this is what I'm going to say. It's okay 
to have a month or two months where it's dead silent. And this is something very powerful that Chloe has always told me. You know, the, the two by two by two. Okay, well, it's an average of two month, two people per month, okay? The last two months have been very dry for me. But what I have not stopped doing is planting the seeds. Don't give up on planting the seeds and forming those relationships and get down on yourself. Because guys, personally, I have not sponsored any in the past two months. And I'm, getting, I'm just saying that to be completely honest with you. I'm now a superstar director and I have not sponsored anybody in the past two months. But I'll be damned if I have not asked everybody and their mother to join my team, why they need to join my team, why it would be a blessing for their life. And I am keeping a full list of who is on my dream team list. And I've told you guys about systems. Have some type of systems. I don't care if it's the note section on your phone. Have it say dream team list. Have the people's names. I'm not saying reach out to them every single week, every couple of weeks, every month. When you have a host to join, because we all have a host to join kit, it does, they don't have to host, they don't have to be the host of the party. I actually like it better if they're not, because then I don't have to give them the PRV. Okay? We always have a $59 kit at our hands. Always. With one cent left in that host credit. Ask people. It might be a no, it might be an ignore but then you're one step closer to that yes, okay? Plant the seeds even when it's hard, okay? Um, active frontline, and I'm, um, Chloe, can you jot down whenever you start talking to kind of talk more about active frontline too and the importance of it? Because I know you've been really digging into that. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Um, so the more active frontline, so the more people that you are not just sponsoring for a number, you're sponsoring and you're leading them and you're coaching them in the way that they should go. Active frontline is a direct reflection of you as a leader, okay? If you have, let's say, three people are your frontlines, okay? And you are a superstar consultant. If you only have one active frontline, you're not gonna get paid a title, okay? And that's with anything. It's up to three active frontlines. You should not be relying on just those two or three active frontline to get you paid at title every month. It's stressful. It's not worth it. And that's not enough people on your frontline. Okay. You need to be consistently building your frontline. That is something that I have to keep doing. Okay. Just like my customer base is something that you don't stop doing. You have to have the hard conversations. You have to ask people you have to build relationships, okay? Um, so you're having people join you and your journey. Why are people choosing you? Well, they might like the way that your hair looks or that you have tattoos or that you're a dog mom or you like drinking wine or you just seem like somebody who would be fun to join, okay? I don't know what it might be, but they're joining you for a reason. When there's so many other consultants, and I'm speaking to the guy or y'all that are in Wilmington and Leland and Regalwood and all around. Cincy consultants are everywhere now. Okay. But what is making you stand out? Because it's not anywhere near saturated. Nowhere near saturated. Rachel Ryan, who is about to be my sister-in-law in four days. I had to think about how long. Okay. Chloe's from Fayetteville. Rachel is from Fayetteville. Rachel joined my team in May, Chloe, half of like literally almost the entire team of Chloe's downline is in Fayetteville. Rachel hit director in four months. Don't tell me it's saturated. Don't give yourself that excuse because it's not. You have to stand out and why are people joining you and not joining somebody that they've seen, you know, selling Cincy for so long, okay? When people are joining you, they're joining you. They're joining Sensi, but they're joining you. They're believing in you and coaching them. These are people. And th I think this was one of the biggest mindset shifts I had. Katie Laster did her training. I think it might've been with Guide to Growth. You're not, tr you're not recruiting for a number. You're recruiting people. Those people have dreams. Those people have deep rooted whys of why they have joined Sensi. And I'm gonna get chills and I'm gonna try not to tear up with this. 
but you're, you have people's lives in your hands. They are joining, they're not, you know, they're not joining Scentsy for $99 just for it to be like a, a month and be like, oh, can't do this. Okay. They're joining because they want the leadership. They want the training. They want the content that they've seen in you and personally you. So with that being said, I have revamped a mandatory, and I'm going to say mandatory because I want you guys using some type of system checklist whenever you're training these new people. Okay. I took the time and I hope that this is very helpful for you guys. Um, it's going to be uploaded into um, the, whatchamacall, Google Drive. There you go. My brain lost, lost it. Um, all right. So it's an entire guide that literally looks like this. I took my brain of how I train my newbies and put it on paper for you guys, okay? The little tips and tricks that we forget to tell our newbies, okay? So I'm just gonna very briefly, briefly go over it um, because you guys are all gonna have access to this, okay? Um, but first and foremost, you have to get them on the phone or be in person with them in 24 to 48 hours. You have to. Why is that so important? Because day one they sign up is day one of Shooting Star. Okay, they have 15 days to hit Shooting Star. You need to make sure that you're on the phone with them, you're telling them these things and that you are setting them up for success. That you are making sure this launch party is planned. That you are making sure that if you're in person or Facebook or whatever you can do, that you're throwing this for them. It's very important. When I joined, Chloe drove two hours down, and I've told y'all, I pressed join without even telling her I was pressing join, and then I told her afterwards. She drove two hours down to host my launch party for me, okay? Something that's been instilled with me, and it's very important. Do you have something to say, Chloe? No, I just think that, like, I want you guys to understand how many people are on here, 27. I want y'all to understand the importance of the launch and the importance of everything Amber's going to say, because I think what happens, and this is for leads and above, right? So I can be honest. What happens is we expect a, um, a handed letter to us, right? And we want to just know how to do it. When you really need to be in the dirt, writing this down, understanding why it's important and understanding why it is the foundation. And I really want you guys to like, just know I'm taking notes about what Amber is saying, but are you taking notes? Are you understanding that this is foundational and this is important because here's the deal. You can do it or not do it. Right. But if you don't launch them the right way, which is so freaking important to me right now, it's something I'm actually working on. And that's why when Amber told me she designed this and, and really mapped this out, her brain as to how she trains these people to success, the ones that want it, it made me realize that this is foundational, right? And if you don't think it's important to be a leader in a foundational moment like this, then you really don't need to be a leader. So I just wanna say that like, I think that what you're saying, Amber, is so important. And I hope everybody on realizes that it's not optional, like you said earlier. I think that something like this as a leader it has to be mandatory. And if it's not because you're busy or whatever other excuse you have, whatever, depending on your season, I think that that is going to really determine guys, Amber's getting married in a week. I didn't want her to do this training. I'm going to be honest with all of y'all. I wanted her to reschedule it. I thought that this is ridiculous. She is more important than you guys. Sorry. Love y'all, but the wedding is more important, but she told me she's going to be here. So tonight I text her and that's why I'm here. But I just want you guys to really tune in and actually take your notebook out. When's the last time you've taken a notebook out? truthfully and written down stuff that actually matters. That's what I'm talking about. Like actually writing down what's important about what you're going to learn and implementing that. So that's all I wanted to say. I'm just really tuned in. I think this is really good content, Amber. And I think that, um, I really hope that the, the 10% on here actually, that actually wants to grow their business realizes that this can't be optional. So I just love it. Thanks. Cliff. Um, and I couldn't help but get a little emotional because guys, I, I don't know if y'all understand how important it is to show up. So there's 26 people on here right now. And I know that's including Chloe and myself, and I'm going to try not to cry, but I get, I get it. 
we're all very busy. And when Chloe says that she told me, she literally begged me all day to cancel this because she knows my mental health and the state that I'm in right now with starting school and having my wedding in four days. But I want to show y'all, and this is something I was always shown, consistency is going to get you where you want to be. I don't care that I have everything else going on. But I wanted, you guys were excited, you guys were ready to learn, and I wanted to make sure that I was being consistent and showing up for you guys, okay? So, Chloe making me cry over here. So, it starts with, and you can take notes if you want, I'm gonna go over this very quick, but it is um, literally going to be uploaded for you guys. Um, so you can just print it off and use it. Um, so I go from the very beginning, talking about you need to get on the phone with them, face, FaceTime, face-to-face, -face, um, first 24 to 48 hours. Um, and then I even tell you guys what I do. I send, an, I send a package, I say email or package, and I tell you exactly what I send them in the mail. Okay, it's very important that you are sending them this information because they're not gonna get their, all of their information until they get their kit in the mail. You sending something is gonna take like one to two days, depending on where they're at. Um, and it's a good welcome. It's a feel good welcome. Um, we always just get bills in the mail. It's a good feeling. Um, so I send in their welcome, um, handwritten welcome note, scent circle, um, scent and warmer of the month, um, brochures that I have, samples of that so they can smell it, so they can start sharing it right away, a catalog, um, a few different samples of how I sample things out. It's very important for people to see what it looks like to sample, what it looks like um, with my labels on it. Um, shooting star information, sensational star levels, okay? First thing I want you to ask people is what is their deep-rooted why? It's very important. Why did you join Sensi? okay? Some people might just be kidnappers. It's fine. That is perfectly fine. People have their own reasons, but then right there you can go ahead and establish once you train them that you know that they just wanted to join to get their, you know, their products for free and half off. And that's perfectly fine. Don't ever look down on somebody for their reason for joining. But if, they're, if their why is deeper, money, money talks, and all of that, then you need to be taking note to that, writing that down, and then that's where you're going to start leaving them immediately, okay? Um, and then I am going to start asking, like, once they tell me they're deeper, do I make a dream board? very important. You guys saw how important it was last week. It's very important to sh recognize your goals and not only recognize them, speak them into existence and they're on something tangible that you can see every single day. Um, something I always tell everybody, you need to announce right now on all social media platforms that you are now a Sensi Consultant. It's not an option. Okay. Not an option. You need to be talking, like spewing at the mouth about you being a Sensi consultant. Everybody who knows me knows that I'm a Sensi consultant. It's not only because I've been here doing this for four and a half years. We just moved into a, um, a new neighborhood and I'm actually looking at my neighbor outside. I gifted warmers to them and gave them scents based on what they said they were like. And there's like three or four that are customers of mine now. Stay open. Okay. Um, they must complete their first things first checklist on workstation. Why? Because that has a bunch of important information. It goes through how they change their picture on there, what is shooting star, how you open up your party thing that Chloe used to have to walk me, she walked me through that, but it tells you on workstation now on the first things first checklist how to do that. Um, I tell them to plan their launch party ASAP because shooting star is important, okay? Then I let them know, launch party. I'm doing it for you. Let's go ahead and get it in the books. Um, and then um, giving them the information for guide to growth. Guide to growth, it doesn't matter if you just joined. It doesn't matter if you've been a consultant for five years. The information is great information. It helped launch a lot of you guys into director and into higher um, leadership. Um, go over shooting star information. I say that shooting star is the first goal, then we're certified. Why? 5% commission immediately, okay? Um, sensational start levels, I go over the sin and warmer of the month. Let them know it's never too early to have people join your team because it's not. If they're willing to be a leader, it's not too early. And you're going to help train them how to be a leader. If it's a new leader, 
you know, and somebody has been a freaking consultant for two days, you need to help them lead these new people. It, whatever that looks like for you. If you need to get them all together to train them at the same time, then do that. Whatever works for you and what makes sense for you. I know we don't have a lot of time to do stuff. <clears throat> um, I think it tells people now, but I go ahead and still let them know, don't use your Scentsy card at a gas station to get gas because it will completely wipe out your system for a couple of days, okay? I tell that to my newbies. Go over three legs of success. Um, tell them that they need to be studying and going over the product training guide. I included a copy of that in the Google Drive for you guys. Um, and the most important thing, you need to label everything that leaves your hands. Everything. There's a million, quadrillion Scentsy, Scentsy consultants. Not really. There's a lot of Scentsy consultants. If they're just looking at a bar, like this right here, this was on back order, or a scent circle, and it does not have any information on it, all they know is that this is from Scentsy. Some people don't know what Scentsy is. There's so many people that I meet that have no clue what Scentsy is. Oh, this is a scent circle. It comes from Scentsy. This has no information on it. You need to have your name on it. I highly suggest a picture so that they can get personal with you guys. Um, your phone number <clears throat> and your website. Okay? Be intentional. Label everything. You can't label warmers. You could label the box. But stuff that is disposable and consumable like this, you need to have a label on it. All right. So that's my consultant checklist. I hope you guys find that helpful. Um, like I said, it's very important to teach, <clears throat> teach people in the way that they should go. And they, um, they don't know if they're brand new, they don't know. Okay. Yes. QR codes on there too. I love that. Um, I don't even know y'all have seen my labels. They're not near me right now. So that's all I got for sponsor. Um, <clears throat> Next, coaching, okay? So your PRV is under control because you're aiming for 2,000 PRV every month to get that 5% increase every single month in your paycheck. You're sponsoring because did you guys know if you drill into your commissions tab and you look at your commissions history, there's a nice breakdown on there. You guys are all leading above. <clears throat> I can almost guarantee you that what you got paid off of PRV is less than what you got paid off of people that are your front line. If you've never done that, do it. It's very important. Okay, your PRV is under control because that's your business. You're taking care of your customers who are gonna be your soon hostesses and soon um, team members. You are sponsoring and you are training them, okay? In comes the coaching. Okay. Coaching can look like whatever it needs to look like for you, but it needs to be intentional. Um, you're not just picking everybody to coach. I'm going to say that again. You're not picking just anybody to coach because I've been there and I've wasted a lot of time on the wrong people. And I've had it said to me so many times from Chloe, Stop pouring into them because you're not getting anything out from them. You're getting excuses. You're getting um, every reason why they can't do something. Move on to somebody who wants it, okay? So something that I really, really um, started doing is what I call, and Chloe calls and all the other leaders, drilling into your downline, okay? Um, Chloe, are you able to, am I able to share my screen or no? Because you're the host. Hang on. I can make you share a screen. Hang on. Da, 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 da. I'm making, if I make you the host, will it stop the recording? That I don't know. Let's not even chance it. Okay. Let's not do that. Okay. Oh. I'm going to tell you exactly how to get to where I'm talking. You want me to pull something up? Yours up? You want me to pull something up? Yeah. Yeah, will you pull up Workstation? Yeah. And go to um, the Performance tab? Yep. All right, so y'all ignore so You guys are all leaders. You know how to get to Workstation. Sorry, y'all. I'm getting to it. Hang on. Let me just type it in first. All right, just keep, 
keep talking, Amber. Okay. Listen, yeah, keep talking. So you are going to pull up your workstation and you are going to go to the performance tab. Just write this down. You're going to press view my performance and you are going to press, there we go, reporting, view my performance. You are going to press, I always do, scroll down a little closer, start downline report. Right there on the left. Okay, what you're gonna do from here is double clicking. So your two things that you need to be focused on when you're looking at who do I want to coach? How do I even figure out who I want to coach? It does not matter if they're your front line. If somebody is displaying two things, it could be one or the other, consistent high PRV, or they are constantly and consistently having new recruits, okay? Building their team. So what you're gonna do, you're going to just toggle over either one, like Chloe keeps going back and forth, and you're literally, like if you went to PRV, you're gonna double click, so you press it once, press it again, it's gonna give you the top PRV down, okay? Same thing if you were to go over to new recruits. You're gonna toggle over it, you're gonna, and you can run these reports anytime you want to. Click up and down, okay? So it's gonna tell you who the new recruits are, it's going to tell you who is hustling to build their team. And if they are not in your exact front line, you can reach out to them. Okay. It's okay. It is 110% okay. I would have never, ever formed a relationship with Kayla Justice if I did not do that. Okay. Chloe would have never, ever, ever formed a relationship with Katie Lasseter if she didn't do that. Said, whoa, hold on. Who is this chick? Their phone number's on there for you to text them. Don't tell me you don't know their phone number, okay? So that is literally how you identify leaders, okay? Then there's a ton more to go through. That's for a different day. But I just wanted to show you guys that's how you identify those leaders, okay? You're not reaching out to your downline and saying, Oh, well, who on your team is the best? And who do you think that? No, don't do it. You have it at your fingertips. Okay. Look into there. Oh, there we go. Chloe said, put the cell number. Okay. Flat and simple. You can choose, actually, if you go to any um, choose visible columns, you can pick what shows. Okay. A text goes a long way. A long way. An email goes a long way. Okay. Don't ever downplay yourself and how much that, that could change somebody's life, okay? You might not be getting leadership, that's okay, but you're there now, okay? Um, so before I pass it off to Chloe, I have some top tips for growing intentional leaders, okay? Something that I have seen that has helped grow and blossom some leaders. Okay. Number one, you're building relationships. They're not just a number. They are a whole human, a whole human. Doesn't matter if you know them or not personally. I, we have like, I don't even know, almost 320 people on our group now. I don't know everybody. Okay. It's crazy to even say we have that many. I remember when I was literally at like 26 and I was like, yes, this is the greatest day ever. Okay. It never ends. It's always the next greatest day ever, okay? Build those relationships. That's what's so beautiful about Cincy is that there's so many relationships I have and even people actually who are coming to my wedding that I never would have known had it not been for Cincy, okay? I'm gonna tell you right now, Mandy James, because I know she's on here, and Desi Taylor, we all work together at the elementary school. Mandy's actually my assistant principal. We would never have the relationship that we have had it not been for Sensi. Had I always shared new stuff with her, had I always sampled to her and all of that. Desi, we, I think we were just destined to be like this, but our relationship blossomed because of Sensi. And it's not because I'm their sponsor. It has nothing to do with that because half the time we're not even talking about Sensi, okay? The relationship is key. 
It's so powerful. So powerful. Everybody longs to be wanted, feel wanted, feel important. That's anything in life. Okay. Relationships. Two, recognize as leaders what you want repeated. Okay. What do you want repeated? You want repeated high PRV. You want repeated um, recruiting. You want repeated promotions. You need to do some shout outs there. You guys see that I do the banner? Very simple. I don't even know. I think I use Over. I know a lot of people use Canva. Me and Over drive together much better than me and Canva, okay? Get an app, it's free, okay? Recognition goes a long way. Email, you can email from your workstation. You guys just saw how she um, selected the text to show. You can text people, it's free, okay? It's awesome, it goes a long way. Recognize what you want repeated, okay? Number three, dig into your downline and teach your leaders to do the same thing. How are you identifying leaders? And you need to coach your people the same way. This is how I do it. This is how you could do it. Okay? It's all about teaching. Comes very natural to me because I'm a teacher. But teach how to do things. Very simple. Can't just expect that people know how to do things. Everybody's brain works completely different. Um, number four, coach your teamies to promote. That's one thing I didn't do for the longest time. The longest time I, I got stuck somewhere in coaching and I was like, okay, well they, you know, they got it, blah, 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 but I was not being intentional. I have uploaded different things and I had them in feed to faith, but I put them in the drive. I know, um, Rachel, my about to be sister-in-law used it with her getting to a director and it's literally, you can color in the levels. Okay. You can cross off when you get the correct PRV. You can cross off whenever you have your active front line and you can track your GWV, okay? I have them uploaded in the Google Drive for you guys to access. It's very, very powerful, okay? You need to be coaching your girls how to promote. You need to know how to promote. How do you get to the next level? It's very simple, very simple. You guys heard Felicia last week as she was talking about um, the difference between superstar consultant and director. She broke it down to like certifieds. If you didn't see week one after this, not tonight, go back and rewatch it. You'll know what I'm talking about, okay? And Rachel, yes, it pushed you more because I was getting daily, literally this insane animal. I was getting daily texts of her being like, oh, look, another level's crossed off. Another, it's very powerful, okay? I'm a very visual hands-on person, so it's very pow powerful for me as well. Um, number five, have consistent high PRV. I've already told you guys why that's important to keep your business rolling. Very important. Number six, have a leadership page. Have a leadership page or and or leadership Zooms, meetings, whatever you need to do to make your leaders feel valued as a leader. Not every leader is going to lead the same way. Fact of the matter. Telling one of my kids today at school, not every teacher teaches the same way. We're all teachers. None of us, hardly, in, no, none of us teach the same way. Okay, where I am like grace and like a little bit of grace, a little bit of hood, a little bit of I'm your mom, but a little bit of don't, don't do the wrong thing. You know, like some teachers are very like this. Everything is, everything has to be this way. Some teachers just don't care, okay? Many different ways that you can have a style of leadership as well. Make something that works for you and make it be genuine, okay? But pour into your leaders, pour into your downline, pour into the people who are doing the right things. So there's a lot with recognition. Um, <clears throat> number seven, throw down the ladder and reach your hands and your feet down to bring people up. There's enough people in this business and in life who are negative Nancy's and who don't want you to be successful. Okay. There's enough room for all of us. Heidi and Norville have made it possible. Just going to say that there's enough room 
and we might be at the top now, but for one, I got to maintain it. For two, I'm nothing without anybody who is on my team. And I want everyone to be at the top with me because literally if I can do it and I thought that I was just joining this to um, pay my bills one summer, here we are. Okay. Help people get where you are, where they want to be. Um, number eight, know the compensation plan. Like I said, if you have never looked at your commissions and now they broke it down beautifully for us, if you've never looked at that commissions, if you don't know what I'm talking about, workstation performance tab, view my performance, go to commissions history. It's on the left, commissions history. And then from there, literally just select the month and there's a beautiful breakdown now. We just got that, okay? Know where you're getting paid most off of. It's not PRV, okay? You're building relationships, you're building leaders, and you're pouring into them. That's what makes a successful, successful business, okay? Number nine, coaching calls with those who are identified in your downline. If you have never watched Coach the Coach, that Chloe did, YouTube OG Boss Babe, Coach the Coach, it was a whole program that she did. That was off of, um, what was it, AIM Leadership? Um, go on there. Learn how to do that. Guide to Growth has some information in there too, okay? You're coaching those who you have identified. You're working closely with them. Where do, what, what do they want to work on? How, what are the tools that you can help give them? You're not doing the work for them, but you're helping them get there. <clears throat> um, and another thing, number 10, I had to remind Chloe that she used to always um, make me do this as I was like, you know, like a lead star, superstar consultant. Have your people who are your identified leaders go live in your team page. Let them know that what they have to add to the team page is valuable because there's so many people that learn so differently. It's very, very powerful. When you instill that trust and belief in somebody, knowing that they can do it, that's the first step. Who cares if you're having a freaking anxiety attack, but if your sponsor or somebody who you look up to believes in you, there's a lot of power in that, okay? Um, so those are my top 10 tips. Chloe, you ready? And highlight yourself. I mean, I guess so. Do they have questions? I'm gonna leave you highlighted. Okay, do you guys have any questions? Drop them in the chat box. No? Cool. All right. All right. Cool. Okay. So I am so excited to be here tonight. So I'm going to introduce myself like Amber said. There may be um, some new consultants on here or new leaders. So let me just go with it. So um, I'm Chloe. I am a, a Cincy consultant, just like every one of you. I've been doing this for eight years. It'll be eight years next month. Um, Amber is one of my best friends in the entire world. So um, I was very excited to um, be able to be on this tonight. And it means a lot to me because Amber means a lot to me. And if Amber means a lot to me, that means every one of you mean a lot to me. So I'm really excited to share with you guys about consistency. And that is what Amber wanted me to talk about. And honestly, I think it's the most important foundation you can have as a leader, in my opinion, right? So who on here right now, I want you to comment, you're in the Dropbox, who on here thinks that consistency is key? Just comment for me. It doesn't, it doesn't have to do with sense. It could be anything in life, right? Like consistency is key, right? So with diet, uh, how you eat, how you, you know, drinking water, getting your kids to school on time, or if you're virtual school, getting them logged in, right? Consistency is key. And I believe that consistency forms uh, behaviors that create success. So let me give you a little background on my family. And um, I'm a, I didn't tell Amber I was gonna say this, but I think it's very important for you to understand. And if you have questions while I talk, feel free to ask me in the chat, any of those things. But growing up, um, it was very different for me than most families. So I grew up with a divided family. So my family, um, my mother and father, they split up when I was nine. 
So for me, um, consistency shattered. My whole life of, of normal shattered at that age. And if you remember when you were nine, think about the things you went through as nine. You know what I mean? Like I see a little girl in here right now who may be around that age. But when you're nine, um, there's a lot happening, right? It's like cool. You're in school. It's like a cool time. You're trying to figure out like all kinds of things. So for me, um, when they split, my consistency was completely shattered in half. It wasn't there. It did not exist. But what was awesome is I had one that did exist. And I'm saying this because it's important to tie into these 10 tips I'm going to share with you. My father was very consistent. My mother was not, but my father was very consistent in the way um, that he, number one, did things he said he was going to do. So I don't know if you guys have done the love language quiz, but I really want to encourage every one of you to do that love language quiz if you have not yet. So you can see what your love language is. And if you're a leader, I really want to encourage you to not tonight, but tomorrow morning, maybe reach out to your leader or to your team members and share that love language quiz with them. I'm happy on feet to faith to share that link. But for, but I want you guys to understand like with consistency, some people are not good at it. And I'm going to be honest, Amber was not, did not think I was going to share this, but I think it's important to understand that it's okay if you're not consistent. How many of you are not consistent? Literally, like you want to be, but you're not. I want you to comment. If you're literally not consistent, like you want to be, but it just doesn't happen. I want you guys to comment, right? We try, right? We try, Jordan, Desi, we try. COVID changed at Trinity, Trinity you're right. We try, we try. Um, so what happens is when you grow up, by the way, if you don't have that foundation, right? You don't have a foundation of consistency. Um, it's very difficult as an adult to be consistent. And I'm saying that because some of you may have grown up, and I know this is a lot <laughs> for people who may have never been on a training for me, but it's important for me to, for you to understand the intellectual side and understand like the, emo, like the, the, like way the mind works to understand how to change it, right? We can't change something if we don't understand why we are the way we are, right? And um, anyway, so um, my dad was very consistent. Things I remember being consistent on when my parents were split. My mom, um, there's a young child on here, so I'm just going to say my mom was very not good um, in and out of institutions and things like that, very inconsistent, not, I didn't, uh, we lived in about 25 houses growing up. So my dad was very consistent. Um, my dad grew up in foster care. My dad grew up, he has five siblings. He didn't grow up in their home. He grew up in foster care. So when I, when I, um, when him and my mom split, what I want you guys to know, and I think this is important because it's, it's leadership and I've never shared this before. The biggest thing that helped me evolve as a human being was seeing consistency from him. And I think a lot of people don't see that growing up. I think a lot of people don't see, oh, she's kissing her daughter. I'm telling you that matters. Like, I'm not going to cry, but like my dad changed my life. You just need one person to, to, to give you that consistent feeling. So I wish I couldn't see video. So I didn't see that girl kissing her daughter, but it matters so much. Because you as a leader, you're in the position to create consistent behaviors that people didn't have growing up, right? Who's not? Who are you, Nikki? It's so true because a lot of us grow up and I think the difficulty in being a leader, does, it doesn't have much to do with the right now. It has a lot to do with the childhood and the upbringing. It has a lot to do with the belief value, all these things. So anyways, my dad really taught me how to be consistent. And I'm going to share something on Feet to Faith. My dad texted me today um, that really means a lot to me. So it can tie into all this, but I'm going to share my top 10 consistent consistency tips as a leader with you guys that has helped me um, really evolve and really stay tuned to the heartbeat of what my mission is. So number one, I want to open this up with saying that Amber is one of my best friends. I love her so much. I will show up for her anytime, any day, no matter what. So I want you guys to know she's literally getting married in a couple of days to one of my best friends too. And I want y'all to know that the number one tip I have on here for cons a consistent leader is a leader who shows up every single day. That's my first tip I want to give you guys. You're a leader on here. You don't have to know it all. 
but you do have to care and you do have to show up even if you don't know what you're doing. It doesn't matter if you don't know what you're doing. What matters is the heart. What matters is you caring. What matters is we're gonna figure it out together, right? Amber's doing this program and it's one of the first, in my, in my opinion, big, huge programs she's ever done for advanced leaders. And you do these kinds of programs and you really don't know exactly how it's gonna tune out, right? But what happens is, is you show up. And when you show up and you're prepared, you actually make an impact, right? And so to me, I think that a consistent leader is number one, a leader who shows up every day. And I'm really sorry about that. I don't know how to get that off and I really don't know how to stop that, so I'm sorry. But I think that if you're showing up, you're doing something. And I think as a leader, a lot of times you don't know how, what to do, right? I, I remember when I was a lead consultant, I had no idea really what I was doing, um, except that I knew that I cared about people. I was a nurse, I'm retired, it'll be three years next month, but I knew that if I showed up for them, it actually would make an impact, right? If I went, if I did the training call, I did once a month calls with one person who was actually my cousin, wasn't even someone like I didn't know or whatever, it was my cousin in Fayetteville. So I, I started coaching, or not coaching calls, I started monthly like leadership tip calls with one team member and i think that's important you need to show up if you have one how many of you if you comment for me if you have one team member i want you to comment you have to because you're a lead consultant and um you have to show up for them you know why you don't know who hasn't shown up for them in their life and for me that's where as a leader the mission and the vision have to actually co like collide and you have to realize that all right I'm not just leading them, I'm helping them become better humans, right? I love how Amber kept saying, they're not just people you sponsor, these are human beings and they're people and they, and they matter, right? And so um, I think the most important thing for a consistent leader is showing up. And one thing my dad taught me growing up, my dad would sometimes have three, four jobs. There's a lot about two, there's a lot too about Amber's dad you don't know, maybe one day you'll learn about him, but with our dads, one thing that both of our dads have in common is they they always show up. They love us very much and they show up. And so I will always say the number one thing is showing up. Always, as a leader. I don't care if you don't know what you're doing, show up, get on the call, don't cancel it. I know you want to, don't cancel it. I know you don't wanna to go to that event, don't cancel it. I know that you don't wanna to go to that party with three people, but don't cancel it. Um, when I did Amber's launch party, a lot of y'all don't know this, but she was in a really bad relationship. When I say bad, I mean like, it was like really abusive. Mentally, I didn't know about a lot of it. We had just started reconnecting. We were friends of college. We partied a lot, but then she joined Sensi. We became like adult friends, very different than party friends. And then um, I could feel the tension of the room, right? So I could feel that there was like something going on with her and him, but whatever. And long story short, because I went to that party and because Amber saw the potential, when she got out of that relationship, she still saw the potential, right? You're building a foundation. And that's why I think it's so important. Number two, um, a consistent leader is one who treats it like a business. I think this is key because, you know, I don't care what your title is after a lead consultant. If you have one team member, this is a business. Honestly, if you have zero, it's a team, it's a business, right? Um, you're getting taxed if you if you make over six hundred dollars. You are selling products. You're a leader, so you're leading your team members. Treat it like a business. You know why? If you treat it like a business, they will treat it like a business. It will catapult. It will a catapult. It will it will trickle. It will it will go down and down and down. And and what I believe creates great groups is great leaders that start at the beginning. And I really believe that if you are showing, not just showing up, but you're treating it like a business, I really firmly believe that that will show other leaders and other team members that this is real. Because one of the biggest thing, things that I see in, even in guys, some superstar consultants, some directors, so don't be this person, right? And Amber knows how this can be. Like sometimes you get people that are directors like SSCs, et cetera, they don't treat it like a business. Guys, you will literally get stopped there. It will stop. And so always treat it like a business, right? A business has business hours. A business has 
priorities that are most important, right? A business has um, goals. A business has all those things. So treating it like a business will run it like a business. But if you treat it like a hobby, you will definitely get paid like a hobby every single month. But if you treat it like a business, you're not just investing in PRV. Guys, PRV, you're leaders. PRV should not be like the struggle for you. If PRV is a struggle for you, get on YouTube, figure it the hell out, sorry. And then go ahead and get to the next step because honestly, PRV should not be your struggle. Treating it like a business, in, in my opinion, means that you're really understanding what um, taxes mean and what, what building leaders means and what uh, wealth means, right? And you can start that as lead. Don't think you can't do that as lead. I wish I did. I wish I didn't start that as a director and understanding, okay, it's a business, right? I didn't understand it was a business until I was a star consultant by myself. None of y'all were there, it was six years ago. And I was at reunion by myself and I realized it was a business. Don't let it get that far, start now. If you wanna be a director, start acting like a, a director and do the behaviors that directors have. What is wrong with you not doing the, the behaviors directors have, right? Um, I'll never forget one time, this before Amber joined, um, I had this director in another group who was really ugly to me. She told me I would never promote, I would never be anything. And she wrote me this really long, sweet email on Facebook. And one of the things she said is you're never going to promote because you don't know what you're doing and you're not a good leader. And so that stuck with me for forever. And I'm like, okay, I don't know what I'm doing and I'm not a good leader. So I need to treat it like a business. And I need to tune into like what matters. So treat it like a business. If you treat it like a business, your team will. I think that's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Um, number three, the, um, a consistent leader is the hardest working one in the room. Guys, I'm telling you right now from Amber, I know how she works. I know what she does. Um, she knows how I work. She knows that I've been working all day. Guys, um, you have to be the hardest working one in the room. You're not going to change the world that way. If you, if you're not, there's no, to me, to Chloe Cox, there is no in between. You're either going to work hard, you're going to change your future, you're going to change all of those things. I was told in middle school and high school, I'd never be anything like, my mom is a severe alcoholic. I was told I'd just, I'd be exactly like her, that I would never get out of college, that I'd never be a nurse. So many things. But I literally like tuned all that in. I was like, I'm going to be the hardest working one in the room and I'm going to prove everybody wrong. And then when I left the hospital, a lot of people told me I was um, not going to make it. I love, I am a Christian, so I love Jesus. So I would tell people about that and they would say I was a Jesus freak. So I had a lot of, um, it was very difficult for me to work hard. And I'm saying that because I want you guys to know you're not going to have the majority vote in this. You're not going to have people that are going to say that your business is real. You're going to have people that work corporate jobs saying that this isn't a real thing. And I want you guys to know tonight that this is real. This has changed my life. This has changed Amber's life. This has changed many of you guys on here tonight, many of your lives. Um, and I think it's so important for you guys to understand that, you know, you have to be the one that is working the hardest. You have to be the one that's trying to learn how to do it better, how to be better, how to do it, how to, how to do it quicker, how to do it better. Because if you're not, who's going to do it? You're going to wait on Amber? Because in my opinion, you're their leader. And if you're waiting on Amber to figure out how to make a system better and how to make something better, whatever, what are you doing? If not you, then who? I'll never forget about eight years ago when I um, was getting into our church here and like really starting to get involved. I heard a speaker and one of the things he said was, if you, not you, then who? So if you don't do it, who's going to do it, right? If you're not the hardest working one in the room and you're not learning um, all the all the things you need to jump over to be better, who's gonna do it? Oh, you're gonna wait on your SSD? Oh, you're gonna wait on your sponsor. Well, here's the deal. If you're gonna wait on somebody else to be the hardest working person in the room, you're always gonna fail. Because the hardest working person in the room needs to be you because you're a leader. And I don't care what anybody else does or says, I care about what you do. Right. And I think it's very important to understand that what's difficult about the hardest working one in the, in the room is nobody sees it. Right. They don't see it. It's very BTS, it's very behind the scenes. A lot of um, hard workers um, 
don't get the uh, credit, validation, all those things, but like you don't need that. And I want you guys to understand that the hardest working one in the room doesn't have a damn thing to do with the recognition. And if you want to get recognized, if you want to promote to get recognized, you're in the wrong business. We love you. We'll always recognize you. But I want you guys to understand that you as a leader, your recognition is going to be that your life changing. Um, your recognition is going to be debt free. Your recognition is going to be you being able to like just do anything you want and to be able to break anything financially that before you can afford. So that's number three is very important to me being the hardest working person in the room. My dad taught me that since I was a young child, I've always been a hard worker. Number four, always evolve. A consistent leader is always evolving. Um, I believe you have to go and grow. I believe that if you're not consistently evolving and always evolving, what are you doing, right? You're a Cincy consultant, right? So at every title you have, everything's going to change. Things will change, okay? So you're at a lead consultant and you may be able to do like this great recognition and mail all this stuff out and do all this, but then you're an SSC and it changes. Then you're a director and it changes a little more. So I think it's really important for you guys to understand that a consistent leader has to evolve. And for me this year, as y'all's SSD over all groups, is um, I had to evolve for everybody. And I had to evolve for myself this year. So the past four months, I've spent creating new systems, creating new branding, creating all this stuff because I had to evolve. And I think it's important for you to know that there's not a roadmap to like, okay, with Cincy, this is exactly what you do. You know what I mean? Um, but I think it's important to know that if something is outgrowing you, then you change it. We have to stop doing things as a leader that's not working. If the bag party's not working, why are we still doing them? We are grown adults. We know it's not working. We know the PRV isn't coming in, but we're still doing them. And we want to train our team to have high PRV, yet we're still doing something that's not giving us high, high PRV. That is the definition of not evolving. So I want you guys to understand Everyone all the time is evolving. I'm evolving, Amber's evolving, we are always evolving. And I think that's really important. Number five, a consistent leader is failing constantly. And I know you probably didn't wanna hear this. I know this is probably like, what? I wanna like succeed, guys. You gotta to fail to succeed. And if you think that you can jump in and swim because SSD's above you, like Amber and myself have done it, you're wrong. You know why? We're not the same. You know why we're not the same? Because God designed us all to be individuals and to be unique. And the thing with being unique is we're all different and we fail. And what happens with failure, I believe, in the consultant or in the, honestly, I consider all of you entrepreneurs. That's, I mean, my husband's an entrepreneur. I watch what he does. We do, sometimes we do a lot more than him. So I consider you all entrepreneurs and, and us and if you don't fail, how can you fly? If you don't fail, how can you know what you did wrong? Guys, I've failed thousands of times in eight years. Thousands. I want you to think about that. Thousands. Not hundreds. Not dozens. Thousands. And if I stopped, I wouldn't have posted about the shoes, which got Amber to join. And if I stopped, I wouldn't have gotten the bag party to Chastity Robinson that caused her to join. If I stopped, I can keep going. Failure is important. And I think that we have to get this point of understanding that failure is what builds like momentum and uh, it, it makes you smarter. It helps create uh, healthy habits of things you don't want to do. And so when you're thinking about all those people as a lead consultant above that didn't reach back out to you that you texted, who freaking cares, dude? That's your job. You're a leader. You reach out to people and you tell them about the opportunity. You tell them that they can get their Cincy free or, and half off and discounted and whatever else. But I think it's very important to understand that failure is inevitable. But the win is coming. It is coming. And um, the wins with Cincy are very small, but they're very impactful. So what do I mean by win? I mean, like when you promote the star director, director, et cetera, and you've been doing all these things, you failed, but you figured out how to fly, right? So what I see in a lot of consultants, and I've never trained on this before, is a lot of consultants want to act like they give a shit about their business and they care about PRV, but they have an open one training, right? Let's just be real about it. 
You want your PRB to be better, but you haven't watched one training on Sensi Club. You haven't watched one training on how to make, do tax parties, etc. So here's the deal. You're going to continue to fail if you don't learn how to fly. And that's it. If you're going to continue to fail and wait on, right, your leader, et cetera, to tell you what to do to fly. Guys, you're, you're adults. Fly on your own, baby. You can do it. So figure out how to fly. Failing constantly to me builds character. It builds, to me, failures to me are not, they don't get me down. It just shows me what not to do, right? And I think as a leader, you guys need to embrace the failure so you can actually be excellent in what you do. Number six, lead by actions and not words. So a consistent leader leads by actions and not words. Amber knows this. We're very similar in this. I don't care what you say. I care what you do. The numbers do not lie. So if I am, if you guys are going to do a coaching call with somebody, okay, like Amber said, quit wasting your time on people that actually are not producing. Why are we doing coaching calls with somebody who's had 80 PRV for the last three months? I don't give a shit what they have going on. That makes no sense. You're a leader. You've had 80 PRV for three months. Why are you getting on the phone with them? I want to help them. Can you do that with a thousand people? Let me know. If you can, yep, mm -hmm. if you can do that with a thousand people, let's have a conversation, but you cannot. So we have to get this rhythm of looking at who we want to work with by their actions. And the sooner you do that and the sooner you, you stop thinking, okay, I don't care. I have 10 people on my team. And so I'm going to work with all nine because you count as a 10, right? So I'm going to work with all nine. So I'm going to work with all nine and we're going to see what happens. Stop. Work with one and recruit five more. I don't give a shit about the nine not working. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. Not in a bad way, but in a way of those not working, guys, you can give them the, the tools, but you, you do not need to you do not need to be leading people and getting on the phone with people that are consistently waiting on your motivation to succeed. Okay. Motivation is not sustainable. Motivation is very, very short lived. Motivation is not how somebody changes their life. And what I, what I love about um, work ethic and motivation together is if you don't have a work ethic, motivation will never work. So you need to make sure when you're working with your teams, when you're working with your leaders, you're looking at their, at their performance. You're looking at the double clicks, like Amber said, you're looking at what they're doing. Um, number seven, a consistent leader shows the way. I think this is very important. You should not just be going the way. You should be showing the way. What does that mean? It starts with one. If you have one team member, everybody on here showed you should be showing them the way. Now, you don't have to do anything crazy, but guys, show them how to succeed. It's very simple, right? In a fun way, in your way, right? Everybody's different. Everybody has different ways that they work. And I think that a consistent leader is consistently showing the way of success in different ways all the time, right? Um, so like Amber said, get a team page. I highly recommend, definitely, if you're a star consultant, what are we doing? Get a team page. That's your culture you're building. Um, number eight, a consistent leader is focused on the people and not the paycheck. And this is so difficult for people to understand, but I have never pulled numbers daily. Now I understand that some people may pull them daily and, and, and may do all that stuff, but I've always just been focused on people. I've been focused on people. I've been focused on, um, helping them be better, I guess you could say, and just helping them achieve good things in life. I don't like to say achieve Sensi goals because as a Sensi consultant, I think if you help them be a better person and you help them understand goals that they can do, right? Um, it'll help them achieve those goals. So I am a firm believer in focusing on, on the people and not the paycheck. My dad always taught me since I was a little girl to always focus on people. Focus on the people and the people will change your life. You guys have changed my life. If you're on Anchored In, if you watched my video from a couple days ago, you kind of heard how I felt when we got paid. You guys have changed my life. This is not a joke. Y'all have changed Amber's life. You are changing um, your, your consultants under you, their lives, your life, your lives are being changed, right? And this is very important because um, the people are changing your life, not the numbers. The numbers come automatically because you're helping invest into them. You're helping um, know the way, go the way, and show the way, which is what Orville, our CEO, always talks about, knowing what you're doing, being educated in that, showing that, and going that way. 
Um, don't ever train your team to do something you're not doing. If, if, and if you're not recruiting, I had one recruit last month. I know Amber said she hadn't recruited anybody. Like we are very transparent about those things. We're very transparent about what we're focusing on and what we're doing. So I think it's extremely impor important for you to be focusing on your teams, always learning B. Yes, exactly what you said. And let's see what Jen said. One problem is I want them all to succeed, but I can't force them. So exactly. You cannot force them, you guys. You cannot make somebody want to be different. You can influence them. You can show them about what you're doing. But you can't say, hey, I'm going to shake you until you do it, right? It doesn't work that way. I wish it did. Um, my life would be a lot different now, right? But it, that's not the way it works, right? So, but what you can do is focus on the ones, like Amber said, recognize behaviors you want repeated and focus on the ones that want it and that are performing. So when you're pulling reports, you are looking at people that have high PRV, that are sponsoring, that have active frontline. I recommend three or more as your top priorities to coach for active frontline. And number um, nine is a consistent leader is always focused on the one. This is really important as you grow. Guys, you may think that you have a small team, but I promise you, there's one person on there. You may just have one person. So the one may be you right now, maybe nobody else, right? But you haven't found them yet, right? Um, the one is so important. Why? Well, it's, it's pretty simple. That's who God was focused on. And whether you're a Christian, I hate religious. I think when somebody says, by the way, religious or not, that's not like a real statement about a relationship with Jesus. I just want to throw that out there. Um, if you have a relationship with Jesus, you know, Jesus was always focused on the one person. So although you may not think you're making an impact on what you know you are, if you think that because you're not sharing as a leader on your leadership page, how you led that one person, it's not a big deal like share those things, share those things, because those are the kinds of things that because of the one, they can influence the many. And I think there's power in that. Um, in number 10, a consistent leader is real. I know this is hard to be vulnerable. I'm very, very not vulnerable. Oh, uh, um, Amber knows this, a lot of people, well, not a lot of people, like probably three people know my actual like things going on. Um, it's very difficult for me to not be, to not like to, or sorry, to be real with my team, but sometimes you have to. And I think that most importantly, the way that you work and the way that you lead, you don't have to lead the way I do or how Amber does, but what you do have to do is you have to lead authentically and you have to lead real and you have to tell them what in the hell's going on with you when you're having a hard time, because what does that build? trust and what happens when they trust you and i've said this for years but i haven't said this for a while if somebody trusts you they will listen to you no matter how hurtful it is no matter how hard it is no matter how um breaking it is for somebody if they trust you they will listen to you and trust is everything trust is everything and so if you're real to your team and you don't have to just be real on your team page. It may be one-on-one -on -one where you're on a coaching call, right? AKA a team building call. You're building them up. You're helping them a gold set. And they tell you that this is going on in their relationship. And you know that you're dealing with that in your relationship. Being real means that you're confiding in them and you're telling them, hey, you know what I'm saying? Like you're being like, look, I know you don't know this about me, but like me and my husband are in marriage counseling, which I am. You know what I mean? Like that's... To me, I think consistency in a leader and being real builds the trust and trust is everything for me with my leaders. If they don't trust me, they can be mad at me all day long, but I don't like that's fine as long as they trust me and as long as they know that what I'm going to say is impactful and, and trust builds with time. Trust builds with when you do the double click, Amber said, and you double click and you realize who um, the people are that you need to invest into. You're building trust with them. Um, you're investing into them. And I think that that is extremely important. And about Active Frontline, what I just want to say about that, because Amber wanted me to catch on it. I've shared an anchor since anchored in, sorry, how important that is about Active Frontline. Um, Amber covered everything that, that I would have said about it's a direct re reflection of you as a leader. You want 50% of your frontline active. Um, you can't rely on the three if you're a director to get you to director. I think it's very important to always be thinking that 
um, to me, active frontline and sponsoring is a lifestyle. And to me, like sponsoring is the best part. If I can sponsor somebody in Cincy Club or, or any of those things, a host or a great customer or whatever, that's really a win because you're losing a customer, but you're gaining somebody that literally could change their life. And in reflection of that will change your life. And so make sure that with active frontline, in my opinion, if you're a lead consultant, you need to be working at two to four star consultant, four to six, um, superstar consultant. And I have the charts just not in front of me. Um, I, eight to 10, uh, director 12, star director 24, superstar director 40. Okay. If you want to grow a big business, I'm going to be really honest. I don't have time to play games to be off. You want to grow a big business, you got to sponsor. The, the, the fact that people are not sponsoring heavy makes no sense to me. When I was growing to superstar director, I was sponsoring two to four a month, literally two to four a month. After that, it was three to eight a month. It just depended on the month. And now I've finally slowed down to analyze how to help y'all, but it's eight years later. So if you want to grow, you have to sponsor. And a lot of times people say, okay, well, I really want to get quality. Quality. Well, guess what, boo boo? You got to go through the quantity to find the quality. You have no idea where the quality is. You have zero. So quit acting like you know because that girl's like this or this guy's like that or whatever. You have absolutely zero clue on who can change their life. Um, out of my frontline superstar directors, I can tell you right now, none of them I would have thought would have joined. None of them. Zero. Um, and so I think it's very important, Brittany Measling said I've sponsored people that blew my mind. So it's like, guys, you have the power, like Katie Laster says, to empower. That's my favorite quote from Katie Laster, one of our SSDs. You have the power to change your life. You have the power to change your circumstance. And, and here's the deal. Me and Justin talked about this today because we were going to like reinvent all these different other systems. And Justin was like, look, we have everything everybody needs to be successful. The only thing stopping them is them. So before I hand it over to Amber, I want you guys to think like, why are you stopping yourself? Why every month are we like, okay, couldn't do it last month. May work this month. We'll see. Why are we doing that? Why are we downsizing our ability? Why are we downsizing because our spouse or because our friends don't believe in us that we can do it? Prove them wrong, guys. I had people in, in middle school and high school and college tell me I would never be anything. Nothing. Okay? So you have to realize that it's not about a coaching call, dude, with Amber or whoever your upline is before Amber. You have the power to change people's lives. It starts and freaking ends with you. And when you have a team, they're in your stewardship. They're yours. So when you wait for this training tonight before you decide to lead, that's your fault. When you wait to get on a coaching call to be um, motivated, right? I didn't even know I was gonna do this tonight until about three hours ago, two and a half hours ago. If you're waiting to like be motivated to do something, right? Motivation is BS. I hate the fact that, um, what's her name? I can't remember her name who did like the five second rule. I hate the fact that she said that because it's so untrue. Like you have to understand that you are literally, time is at your side, but you're also wasting time as you're waiting for other people to show you something that you already know. Why are we waiting for people to show us shit we already know? Why are we waiting for people to show us how to recruit when you're the one not asking people? Why are we waiting for high PRV when we haven't watched that training on Cincy Club? Why are we waiting on leadership when we haven't opened one document? So what I want you guys to understand, number one, I love you guys, and I don't want y'all to think if we're handed over to Amber, I'm like this crazy person, but this is real. Right? Yeah, Nikki, we have the same 24 hours in a day as Beyonce, literally. What are you doing with your 24 hours? You don't even want to know what I did today because I don't play at all, ever. I met with my one of my SSDs, one of her systems with her, got a decal for her, met with my assistant. Yes, you should have an assistant as an SSD, something me and Amber are going to work on next year. Like, I don't play. I don't give a shit who's telling me what to do. I don't need anybody telling me what to do. You know why? Because I have goals. I have two-year dreams. I have five-year dreams. 
I have things that I'm trying to do. I don't need to wait on somebody to coach me or train me on things that I know I need to do. You know, as a leader, you need high PRV. You know, as a leader, you need to be recruiting two a month. Here's my tip. Why are we stopping at two? You want to be a director? Two to four. Three to six. Is, it a, is there a special that month? Mm, five to ten. What do you want? You want to come to the table, but do you want to prepare the meal? Right? Um, I want to feed you, but you have to come to the table and, and help prepare the meal. So you need to understand, guys, every one of you on here, I don't care if you're a lead consultant, I don't care if you're an SSD on here or whatever, you know, this is something that is impactful way further than Cincy. And I think a lot of people don't realize that. I think a lot of people think, okay, well, Cincy, I'm not just Cincy. Chloe Cox is not Cincy, just Cincy. And you're not just Cincy, right? You're in, you are in the position to actually help change people's lives. That's your position. It's powerful. Do you believe it? Do you know that you can change people's lives? Do you know that you can help people get out of debt? Do you know that you can help people... Um, pay for a debt-free wedding like Amber and her husband did, about to be husband. Do you know that you can, um, I just literally, I can't even talk about it. It's so hard to talk about, but I just gave my parents $2,000 a couple of days ago, $2,000. And my goal is to give them more and more and more until I can retire them. That's what it's about for me, right? So I want you guys to understand that this is not just like quit waiting on other people to show up for you to show up for yourself, right? You are waiting on somebody to change your life. Why? What are we waiting on, dude? Anyway, so I'm going to pass to Amber. I love you. I'm going to unmute you. Wait, there we go. All right. All right. I don't even know like how to follow up with that. So thank you, Chloe. Thank you for um, FaceTiming with me and literally saying, don't do this, but then saying, okay, I'm going to hop on there with you. Appreciate you. Um, that's what it's about, guys. It's about that. It's about that. It's about that relationship. And as she was saying, me and Chloe have been friends since college and then as adults, uh, we were going to the same church and that's where we got back into it. And then Sensi. So I hope you guys wrote a lot of notes. I have all the notes <laughs> on top of everything I already had. Um, so the biggest thing, a <laughs> couple things, the quotes where y'all know I'm a quote person. Like I am, that's me. Um, you're either going to work hard or you're not. It's very basic. You're either going to be consistent, you're going to show up, you're going to do the three legs of success, you're going to love hard, you're going to lead hard, and you're going to do it no matter what, or you're not. Okay? I love how talking about motivation, it's a liar. You're not always going to feel like it, okay? After things like this, fires are lit, y'all. This is why I love events. They're my favorite because I leave with my cup completely filled and I'm ready. Like, I literally feel like I could take on the damn world. Like, I could just go and, like, take over the whole entire world, okay? But motivation's a liar. It's not something that lies in us, but it's for you to recognize that, that we're human, and we know that. So what do we do to fix that? What do we do to help us out? And I talked about last week, having accountability partners. Who are you reaching out to to help lift you up during those times when you're like, nah, <laughs> we ain't doing this. Or when your, your sponsor best friend is saying, it's your wedding week, don't do it. I still did it. I'm very hard-headed, <laughs> very hard-headed. And that's one thing I've always done. I've been very consistent. Okay, be consistent because people are watching you. And that's the most powerful thing. Most powerful thing. People are watching you. And I've said this to my team for years. They're watching and waiting for two things. 
Are you going to fly and be very successful and push past everything? Or are you going to fail? Because that's what they want you to do. They will eventually ask you, okay, like I was two and a half years later, how are you earning these free trips? You just bought a new pair of uh, pumps. Like, what are we doing? How are you going to Disney World? Then I thought about it for another month and then I pressed join. They are watching. And if they're talking, you're on their mind. Who cares what anybody has to say? Let's be real. Who cares? We are all grown adults. I don't know the age of all of y'all on here, but I'm about to be 30. We are all adults. We pay our own bills. We do all the things. You're in charge of what your life does. Who cares what people have to say, okay? Once you get out of that mindset, you can like literally conquer anything. Um, for real, for real. Another thing, um, you want to come to the table, you got to help prepare the meal. Okay. Simple as that. Who's at your table is very important. Like I told you guys last week, make sure the people that you're uplifting you and they're feeding into you and that are holding you accountable and that are your cheerleaders are at your table. First off, you don't want anybody who's sucking you dry. Been there, done that. When I got rid of those relationships is when I hit star director. It's very, very real. Very real. Okay? So, with all that being said, because I literally have nothing else to say because Chloe just covered everything, do you guys have any questions before I tell you guys your homework? Because, you know, I'm a teacher and we got things to do. We got empower, or empowers right? Empowers to build. Is that right? We have things, buildings to build. I don't know. Yeah. If y'all keep me in your thoughts, I'm getting married on Saturday. That's kind of crazy. Super crazy. Okay. No questions. Um, so your homework, I want for you guys to go into your workstation, to your performance tab, drill into your downline, and I want you to double click on two things. I want you to double click, like we showed you, the PRV, and I want you to double click the active, uh, not active frontline, the recruits, okay? I don't want you to do that for this month because it's 13th, I want you to do it for September. I want you to drill in and see who are those people that probably you didn't even like realize, or maybe you did, but you didn't realize the extent of their worth and their hard work and their consistency. Okay. Once you do that, make a list, however that looks like for you. I want you to reach out to those people. You have their phone numbers. I want you to text them, voice text them, whatever you need to do. And I want you to say, congratulations. I want you to say, great job. What I mean, you make it be whatever, because you know, my words aren't going to be what your words are. I say boo and all kinds of crazy things all the time. So reach out to them. And then I want you to start that relationship with them. And I want you to intentionally start coaching them and leading them because there's power in what you have as a leader and what you have to say and it's time to realize that and embrace that and step up, okay? Be the change you wanna see. Like Chloe said, it starts with one. It really does. Be the 1%, okay? 23 of you who have stayed on here for an hour and 40 minutes. There's a reason you want more. You're hungry for more. That's why I wanted to do this program and I didn't care that it was my wedding week, okay? Because I want to show up for you guys and I want you guys to know that it's possible. Okay. I might be at SSD right now, but I never thought that was going to happen. Okay. I'm still, I'm literally still not in that mindset. Okay. I keep getting like emails from home office and I'm like, I don't even understand this. Really. I'm like starstruck. Okay. We all started as essential consultants, but there's the things that you got to start doing and consistently doing to get in the rhythm that people are like, wow, they're not stopping and they're actually taking this serious. So maybe I should listen, right? If you think that I came on this call tonight and I knew what I was gonna say, I mean, I was on my computer at like 6 p.m. and I was like, okay, so I had a little bit of notes done, but you know, you roll with it. You learn to roll with it. 
Chloe didn't even know until she was like at seven o'clock. She was like, do you need me on that call? You need me on that call. Okay. I'm going to hop on that call. Okay. Do the hard things because they're going to be worth it. So much in the end. Okay. I'm going to hop off here.